The United States administration sanctions international network involved in financing Houthi militia in Yemen. The United Nations Food Agency chief says that 30 million people in Yemen face starvation. New international report speculates that the war between Russia and Ukraine could impact the humanitarian situation in Yemen. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Yulana Swelem. The United States on Wednesday sanctioned a sprawling international network run by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and a Houthi investor. The network provided tens of millions of dollars to Yemen's Houthi rebels. More details on this are within this report. The Biden administration imposed sanctions on an international business network that finances Yemen's Houthi rebels and their attacks on people in Yemen and the Persian Gulf in an attempt to dry up funding that pulls towards the country's seven-year civil conflict. According to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, the sanctions were closely coordinated with Gulf partners in response to Houthi attacks inside Yemen and recent terrorist attacks targeting civilian sites in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, which have resulted in numerous civilian casualties. We continue to work closely with our regional partners to act decisively against those seeking to prolong this war for their own goals, Blinken said in a statement. The United States remains firmly committed to helping Saudi Arabia and the UAE defend themselves and the tens of thousands of US citizens living in the Gulf against these Houthi attacks. The Biden administration is under pressure to address the Iran-backed Houthi group's war crimes more directly after removing a terrorist designation issued by former President Trump in the last days of his presidency. Critics of the administration's decision argue that delisting the Houthis has enabled them to carry out a terrorist attack, including one this month on a commercial airport in Saudi Arabia that injured at least a dozen people. In January, Biden stated that he was considering redesignating the Houthis as a terrorist group. However, Democrats, UN officials, and human rights activists warned that a designation against the Houthis would make it hard for humanitarian organizations to provide crucial help to an estimated 21 million people in need, or roughly two-thirds of the population. We urge you not to pursue a designation that would have little practical impact on the Houthi leadership, but would have catastrophic humanitarian consequences. Senator Chris Murphy wrote in a letter to Biden on Wednesday. Millions of Yemeni lives hang in balance, and the United States should remain focused on alleviating the human suffering and ending this war. Yemen's seven-year civil war has had the tragic distinction of being one of the world's greatest humanitarian catastrophes, with violent armed conflict aggravating conditions in an already impoverished country. U.S. envoy Tim Lindriking had a meeting with National Reconciliation Movement of Yemen to discuss their perspectives about peace process. Lindriking stated that U.S. feels strongly that dialogue must be Yemeni-led and the international community role is confined to only create the space for Yemenis to come to the table. During a phone call between Foreign Minister Ahmed bin Mubarak and U.S. envoy Tim Lindriking, bin Mubarak stressed on the importance of the sanctions imposed by the U.S. government on individuals and international network which is involved in financing the Houthi militia war against Yemenis. The head of the UN Food Agency, David Bisley, has warned that 30 million Yemenis are headed for starvation due to a protracted civil conflict and a lack of funding for humanitarian aid. David Bisley said that Yemen was in a very bad situation, with more than 40% of the population already relying on food supplies from the World Food Programme. He added that his agency was forced to cut rations in half for 8 million Yemenis due to the shortage of funds. The American Center for Justice and Rights, rather for Human Rights, condemned the Houthi-controlled criminal court for sentencing to death 13 kidnapped citizens in the capital Sana'a. The center considered these sentences a continuation of the violations committed in the name of the judiciary, which lacks legitimacy. They called on the international community to put serious pressure on the Houthi militia to prevent the execution of the death sentences issued against the kidnapped citizens. Houthi militia violations against journalists and freedom of speech are increasing day by day. 
Just yesterday, the militia kidnapped the media staff working for the U.S. Embassy in Sana'a. This is not the first time rebels attacking U.S. staff, while Biden's administration is reluctant to redesignate the militia as a terrorist group. The following report has more details. Journalists and media institutions were the first victims after the Houthis' control of Sana'a in September 2014. Since then, there has been a massive decline in freedom of the press. There is no longer an appropriate environment for freedom of expression and professional press in Yemen. The Iranian-backed Houthi militia has kidnapped two employees of the U.S. Embassy in Sana'a, three months after storming the building and looting its contents and kidnapping several employees. Sources said that Houthi elements kidnapped the assistant head of the media attaché at the U.S. Embassy, Abdul Rahman al sharabi after storming his house in the capital Sana'a, which is under the Houthi control. The sources indicated that the kidnapping of the journalist al sharabi came just days after the arrest of his colleague and the attaché, Nabil Sultan. Late last year, the Houthi militia kidnapped a number of local employees of the Washington Embassy in Sana'a from their homes before storming the embassy building and confiscating office equipment and furniture at a later time. At the time, the U.S. State Department described the storming incident as an insult to the entire international community. The Yemen Union of Journalists blamed the Houthi militia for its obstinacy and persistence in not releasing journalists and exchanging them for prisoners of war. The union said the war has dealt with journalists as their enemies and have launched incitement campaigns against them. At least 39 have been murdered and hundreds have been arrested or kidnapped. Yet, the U.S. is still considering redesignating the Houthi militia as a terrorist organization. As violations against journalists increased during the war, many journalists have lost their jobs and others lost their lives. The Committee to Protect Journalists said healthy rebels in Yemen must stop shuttering media outlets, abusing, torturing, and killing journalists. They should allow all broadcasters to operate freely in a free country. Houthi militia launched a campaign of raiding and seizing the properties and homes of citizens and leaders against the militia in the areas under its control. Sources confirmed that Houthi, Houthi militia has started a new campaign to storm and rob the properties and homes of a number of citizens in the capital Sana'a, Jabal al mahwid district and the Mar city. Since the Houthi coup in 2014, thousands of Yemenis have become either displaced in their own country or sought refugee outside. Some have decided to seek protection in Europe, yet because of the restrictions of entry in those countries, Yemenis sometimes die and are lost in the forests. The following report has more details. To escape the hell of the Houthi war, the in the cold forests kidnapped Yemeni immigrants to Europe. Recent years have witnessed an escalation in the forced migration of young people towards neighboring countries. Immigrants stated that they have searched for work and life, but due to the war launched by the Houthi militia, plunged the country into the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Yemeni youth resort to leaving their homeland to escape the oppression and violations by the Houthi militia, disruption of education, lack of work, and forced recruitment operations targeting children and youth that led to the destruction of the Yemeni human being. A week ago, a 26-year-old Yemeni citizen died on the international border between Poland and Belarus, according to the announcement of the Yemeni embassy in Warsaw. In a statement, the embassy stated that the citizen died in the isolated wetlands in the Biatawia forest of Poland, noting that it's following up with the relevant authorities the facts of this incident to complete the legal procedures in order to bury his body. In October, the government announced the death of a citizen on the border between Poland and Belarus as a result of the severe drop in temperatures. About 26 Yemenis were stranded, along with other immigrants, before most of them returned to the country at a later time. Last year, the International Organization for Migration announced the death of at least 34 Yemeni migrants when their boat, operated by smugglers, sank on the way to Djibouti. The war ignited by the Houthi militia caused hundreds of thousands of Yemenis to lose their jobs inside the country, forcing them to flee and migrate abroad by sea to Africa and from there to European countries. Muatna Organization for Human Rights warned against the continued involvement of the judiciary in the conflict that is tearing Yemen apart for the eighth year. 
The executive director of the human rights organization, Abdul Rashid Al Faqih, said that such trials and sentences lack the minimum conditions for a fair trial. The human rights activist considered that these trials confirm the continued involvement of the judiciary in the conflict, which has caused the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. The Houthi militia incurred huge human and material losses as a result of air raids by coalition fighters in Hajja. Military sources said that coalition fighters carried out several air raids on Houthi militia sites and gatherings, according to the media center of the 5th military district. According to the sources, 18 raids targeted gatherings of the militia, military vehicles, crew carrying Houthi elements and supplies in the districts of Harad, Abs, and Mastaba, north of Hajja. Yemen's crisis, though described by the UN as the worst humanitarian situation in recent history, is still not well covered in international media. A new report has warned that any new conflict in the world, like the one broke out today between Russia and Ukraine, could impact the situation of Yemen, especially in regards with displacement support. The following report has more details. Over 20,000 people have been displaced in Yemen since the war began. As violence breeds an air of constant terror that forces people to flee, caught between the grip of famine and a forgotten conflict. This figure emerged in the latest report on the Arab country, published recently by experts from the International Organization for Migration. According to the report, most of the displaced people were registered in the governorates of Ma'rib, Hudayda, and Taiz. Thousands of people are trying to escape the war's unyielding military escalation. The conflict's progression has led to the displacement of many families, with great human and material losses. According to the UN, the war resulted in the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Millions of people are on the brink of starvation, and children, then thousands of whom have died in the conflict, will suffer the consequences for decades to come. There are over 3 million internally displaced persons, most of whom live in conditions of extreme poverty and hunger, as epidemic threats like cholera hang over their heads. Activists, aid workers, and experts are also concerned about the war between Moscow and Kiev, which could have serious repercussions in the Middle East and in countries in precarious situations such as Yemen. Moreover, several Arab states in the area, Lebanon, Egypt, and Tunisia, to name a few, depend on Russian and Ukrainian wheat to meet local demands. These Arab countries are already experiencing food crises to a great extent. A potential increase in prices due to a decrease in production risks further exacerbating the situation. On the war front, new victims continue to be recorded, including minors. Thomas Kerbalon, MSF's head of mission in Yemen, points out that since fighting has intensified on the front lines near Harad, and more recently the northern district of Abs, health workers have received a significant number of injured people. The new escalation is a source of concern for the safety of people who are already affected by years of fighting and displacement. All parties to the conflict must respect international humanitarian law and take necessary measures to protect civilian lives. The British international mine and explosive expert Chris Clark said that Houthi militia deliberately planted mines and explosive devices to directly target civilians. He confirmed that the mines and explosive devices planted by the Houthis in schools, homes and mosques target civilians directly, not just to injure but to kill them. Clark, who is currently the director of special operations in Massam project to clear Yemeni landmines, pointed out that the Saudi project has cleared more than 100,000 mines so far. Coming next. In Aden, Tree Cafe is a tale of a historical place retold by the masses. الواحد مئة مئة وعشرين ألف والكيس الدقيق بثمانة عشر ألف والكيس السكر اليوم بعشرين ألف كم بعلي بيعطي هذا الراتب كامل بكيس سكر وكيس دقيق المواطن اليمني يعيش في أزمة إنسانية وغذائية مؤلمة من غلى الأسعار وفحشة الأسعار وغلى الصرف والعملة الأجنبية في البلد حالة الحين حالة لما أخرج المندب إحنا شبكينا ما نقدرش نأكل الأكل داخل ما إحنا بحاجة صعبة
Welcome back. The Tree Cafe in Aden is a historical place where many famous men of letters, politicians, used to gather in. The cafe is still opening till today, serving the locals. More details on this story are within this report. The Tree Cafe is considered one of the oldest popular cafes in the city of Sheikh Uthman in Aden. It has now become one of its flags. Its patrons were similar to the rest of the famous cafes in 50s and 60s of the last century, such as al Jurek and al Qumiri cafes. The cafe was founded by Hajj Abdu Mukrid on the 18th of February 1952. Now it celebrates the 17th anniversary of its opening. The thing that might not be known to the young generation. It was inaugurated in an alley branching of two official streets in the area opposite the famous Shawqi home in Sheikh Uthman area and the market, which sells all daily necessities, starting from the meat market, passing through the market of dates, fresh vegetables, fruits, fish, and ending with the Qat market. Not to mention the location of the cafe near all the main stations of land transport and its geographical location made it one of the landmarks in the city. And its name was associated with the presence of a tree was sheltered by its patrons, where the stars of politics, literature, art, and sports come for it. The cafe was a meeting point for Aden segments of all levels, as well as visitors and guests of Aden Governorate. And we should not forget that the cafe had the first credit for reuniting men and youth of Aden who were displaced from their districts, occupied by the Houthi militia in the beginning of 2015. Among the most prominent figures who frequented the cafe in the 60s and 70s of the last century, politicians and officers were the President Salem Rubaiya Ali, Sultan al-Dush, and the late Major General Sadiq Haid, former Adan police chief. Among the athletes are Ali al-Mansouri, Nasser Ahmad Maridi, and Abdul Rahim. The Tree Cafe is considered the first in spreading cultural awareness by purchasing a radio for the cafe, and its purpose was to follow the news and program of the voice of the Arabs, especially to hear the enthusiastic speeches of the leader Gamal Abdel Nasser, as well as the London BBC Radio, and to follow up on all its publications, and to follow up on Radio Aden, which happened to be broadcasted in the 50s. When the gramophone appeared, as well as the recorders with recorded cassettes, they were obtained directly by the cafe to give a better qualitative leap for the listener who was attracted to everything new in the market. The cafe was credited with broadcasting Egyptian songs from gramophone and recorders like Muhammad Abdel Wahab, Umm Kulsoom, Farid Latrash, Abdel Halim Hafiz, and Yemeni songs which had a great role in attracting visitors. The cafe was considered as a symbol of interdependence and knowledge more closely than a gathering place and for this reason it became a destination for immigrants before spending their daily needs in the morning and evening. The Yemeni oil company began loading and transporting the emergency batch of oil derivatives to Taiz governorate. The governor of Taiz, Nabil Shamsen, confirmed that the local authority and leadership of the oil company have put accurate procedures to sell at approved prices, so that all stations sell to citizens at a price of 21,500 riyals per gallon. The governor warned that any station that violates the instructions will be suspended and its license would be withdrawn. Three years after its initial failure, the Houthi militia is re-attempting to impose an electronic currency. The Houthi militia announced the launch of the Yemeni mobile phone company Sabafone in partnership with CAC Islamic Bank, with a license from the central bank in Sana'a. As part of its mobile services package, Sabafone has launched an alternative to traditional cash that can be used for money transfer, payment of commercial purchases and utility bills. World Health Organization announced that 100,800 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine arrived in Aden via COVAX. The organization added that nearly 760,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been administered in Yemen, with support from the organization and other partners. World Health Organization issued this statement with a confirmation that vaccine saved lives at the period of COVID-19 pandemic. Here's a reminder of the many headlines. The United States administration sanctions international network involved in financing Houthi militia in Yemen. The United Nations Food Agency chief says that 13 million people in Yemen face starvation.
New international report speculates the war between Russia and Ukraine could impact the humanitarian situation in Yemen. This is the end of the news. For more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube at Yemen Today English. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.